Hello everybody, thanks to a vote by my Patreon supporters, I'm going to be taking a look at debug mode in Gaming Studio 2. Um, debug mode has existed in 1.x and was really, really useful there, and uh, it's recently been revamped and has gotten loads better in Game Maker Studio 2 very recently, but a lot of people still don't know what it is or how you can use it or, or, what, or what they can get out of it. So I'm going to go over the basics, I'm not going to cover everything, can't be really exhaustive with it because there's a lot to debug mode and a lot of stuff you can do with it, but I'm going to go over the coolest features of it and how you can use them. So when you go to run your game, you might have noticed next to the run button, which you can also press F5 for, if you press F6, you can do what's called debug mode. And now that runs the game, just the same as pressing F5 or clicking the run button does, but it runs it in a special mode um, and opens what's called the debugger, which contains a bunch of tools that allow you to analyze and see exactly what's going on in your game at any given time, and even allows you to step through line by line the code that's being executed as it is executed and uh, see uh, and work out how your game is breaking, if it is breaking, or work out where you're running into performance issues and all kinds of really useful stuff, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. So one immediately useful thing in the debugger um, that might not actually show up by default, I'm not sure, it, it didn't for me, but it might just be because of, of a thing with moving between versions, I know this is kind of new I think, um, so if you go to debugger and hit windows and go to graph, you get this graph appears and it's just a dock so you can dock and undock it and put it wherever you want just like anything else. Um, but it just shows you just very simply in the most basic way of using the debugger really, it shows you like the frame rate and your memory usage at more or less any point in time. So you know if your memory usage keeps like shooting up you might have a leak or something going on. And if your FPS starts to tank, you might have a performance bottleneck. So at the moment on the sort of the, the title screen of uh, Tribal Tension, the game I'm working on at the moment, my FPS is really good, it's over 3000. And if I start the game, you see that quickly tanks, because um, the game itself is, is a lot more performance intensive than the menu is. Um, so you can see the very big mark difference there. It also pops up these little uh, white uh, blops now and again, and uh, the blue ones for certain internal things. So you can see this has popped up when I've created a bunch of surfaces. Um, but white ones show up whenever I call show debug message or debug event, I think is a new one. Um, so you can see when certain things happen in your game. You can just pop that, it's a line of code you can pop anywhere in your game um, that will send a little message to the output window. So you might be familiar with that from other stuff down here. I, I have a lot of stuff in here that, that processes whenever certain things happen in my game. So I can see what's happening when. Um, and learn certain useful debug information. That's useful just generally, but seeing it in here is great too because it means I can see if those things that I'm doing are causing certain performance spikes and uh, and so on, and that's really useful. That's probably the most basic way of using the debugger is just taking a look at this graph and seeing you know how your game is doing. One of, if not the most important and immediately useful features of debug mode is the ability to pause your game and actually run through line by line um, every single line of code in your game as it's running and also be able to observe variables at the same time and what they're doing and how they're changing in order to work out where things are going wrong in your game if things are going wrong. So say in the platform game that I've been working on for the pl platformer series, say there was something going wrong whenever a bullet hit an enemy and say they, they weren't losing their hit points correctly or something like that. Um, but all the code I've written seems to indicate that they should and I want to work out what's going on. Well I've come to here where the old bullet, um, where it actually has a collision with the enemy and I'm just going to click in the mark Margin at HP minus minus to set a breakpoint. Okay, um, I can also press F9, but I'm not going to because that's also the global uh, record stop record button for OBS and would stop me recording this video. Um, I made that mistake the first time. Had to get rid of that footage. Oh well. Um, but if I place this here, what hap what this means is when I run debug mode and the game actually hits this line of code, the game will pause. Um, and it'll allow me to sort of take a moment to see what's going on and see what all these variables are doing and if they're doing what I'm expecting them to do. So let's run debug mode now that I have this um, this breakpoint in here. Um, it'll ask as well, the debugger tends to ask you to uh, allow it through a firewall, so do that. So I've got the game and everything's just running as normal. Um, and let's see what happens if I shoot this guy. You see the bullet just about to collide with him there. Um, this is the frame before the collision, likely. Chances are whenever the game freezes on a breakpoint, as it has done here, you can see the, the red line showing up there. Um, chances are what you're being shown in the game is the frame before the frame you're actually kind of on or are working on, because that's how games work, right? The, the whole, all the step and the logic is worked out and then the final frame is, is drawn based on that, right? So really what we'd expect to be seeing on the end of this frame would be him flashing white and the, the bullet being destroyed on him and, and so on and so forth. But here we are, here is where um, 
the collision between the bullet and him has just been detected, or rather the frame beforehand is what's being shown here. Uh, so you can see our hit points um, is 4 at the moment, and um, we're going to expect that to be subtracted by 1. We've got HP minus minus here. Um, we've got, if I hover over flash as well, um, the, the the local variable inside other inside the enemy itself uh, is currently 0. We're going to expect that to get set to 3. And uh, hit from as well, that determines what direction we've just been hit from based on the bullet direction. Uh, the bullet's direction uh, apparently is zero. Oh no, I, oh, no, no, that won't be zero, but um, it's probably because it's getting direction from this as opposed to other dot. That's why it's showing that. Um, but what I can do now is if I actually, I don't, I could just run uh, the game again now. So if, well, I could continue with the game. So let's do that first. So you can see that's carried on as normal and let's shoot him again. So you shoot him again, let's pause the game again. And you see hit points is now three. So we know that's working correctly. Uh, well, we can assume it's working correctly anyway. Instead, let's, let's actually go through line by line now and see what's going on rather than just uh, continuing and waiting for it to happen again. So I've got a bunch of functions here that allow me to actually progress through and go line by line without having to set more breakpoints. I'm going to send like 50 breakpoints in a row just to see what's happening on each line. The most useful one is here, or, or the most... Um, uh, the most sort of low level specific one is here. Um, this one allows you to go through line by line and see exactly what's happening. Um, and if you were to go over a script call or a function call, it would then open up that script and go into that and so on. It's called step into function call. It's the leftmost one of the three. Um, step over function call does the same thing, but if you were to go over a script or something like that, it would um, it would skip over it. And step out of function um, would um, would send us to like this line here. It would skip out of the block that we're currently in, or the the event itself. Okay, so it would probably skip us down to event destroyer instance destroyer. I say skip; it doesn't actually skip. It'll still run those things. It'll just not pause again until it hits that. Whereas if I just hit this button here, step into function call, uh, you see it goes just one line ahead and sends us to flash, which is currently zero. And we can look up to say hit points, and we can say hit points is now two. Okay, which it was three a minute ago, so we know that line processed correctly. I should hope it so. It's probably the simplest line imaginable. <laughs> um, and if I step forward one more, we should see that flash got set to be three. Okay, so we know that that's all happening as we expect it to. Okay, um, and again, if I just hit play now, um, so let's find that same guy. It was this guy, I think. Let's shoot him again. See, hit points is uh, now two. Um, it should have now just gone to one. Yep, it's now on one, and if I step through, uh, step forward one more, we know it's gone to zero. And um, if I open up, even just while this is running now, O oh, enemy, and find the point where um, uh, if hit HP equals zero is checked, and we just go into here, and um, now I go back to the debugger, and hit continue, we'll find, um, we'll come to here, just on the exact same frame. Uh, or rather, I'm not the same frame, you can see it's flashed now because it's gone around to the next frame. So that's an interesting thing for us to know. We know that that hit point thing, uh, that bullet check was applied and the, the hit points were set to zero. And then a whole frame happened before we got round back to checking whether or not HP is less than or equal to zero. We might like that. We might think we need to change order of stuff and so on. But that, that taught us something about how our game is currently working. Okay, so we can see it's flashing right now and the next frame has happened. So if HP is uh, less than or equal to zero, which it is because we've managed to get inside this call and break here, um, we can step into this as well. Um, uh, oh yeah, we've done a with create. So like that function will, will do the create event of this. So we can step through this stuff. Uh, we can step into the screen shake. Um, and so stuff like that might be where you want to not use that. And so just, you know, because you're not interested in all the screen shake and stuff, you might just want to know what's going on here. Um, so in that case, you might have wanted to do a step over function call, which would have stepped us over all that and would have just brought us into here. Still done it, but would have stepped over it. Um, and then we can see the direction, everything being set up for the, uh, the dead sprite that gets made afterwards. And if I just hit play as well, then we can see that. That all carrying out. So you can see how that would in itself just be really, really useful um, to allow you to pause the game at specific times and see what's going on. There's even more to it than that, and we'll see as we carry on throughout this video. So the other main great use for debug mode is the various watch windows that appear as well. So not only can you just step through the code and look at the variables um, 
like just by hovering over them in code, but you can actually see basically any variable in your game at that point. And you can see more than just variables, you can even see like surfaces and preview what um, texture groups and so on currently contain and, and all different kinds of great things. Um, but in order to see most of that, you generally have to have the game paused. There's a few things you can see in real time if you toggle uh, real time debugging on. Um, but most of the time you need to pause the thing. And you can pause it either through a breakpoint, as we've seen, but you can also just pause at any time just by hitting this button up here, this break button, and it'll pause it. Uh, and that means you don't really get to control exactly when it gets paused. Um, that's what breakpoints are, are good for, though, for controlling exactly when things break. But you can just pause at any time like this. You can also restart the game, do all kinds of things. Uh, so by pausing that, you can see a bunch of these windows are populated at the bottom here. And we're not going to go through all the different things that are in the debugger, because the debugger is huge and it's got loads of cool stuff you can do with it. But I'm going to show you the basics of using it so um, um, so you know how to get started and you can start using it to solve your own problems and things that are going on in your game. So you can see um, instance at the moment, uh, this gives us... Um, uh, the, the various variables of whatever instance we happen to be in, um, which we didn't control because we just did a, uh, uh, we just paused wherever. But I think this is paused as in the player step event, the player begin step event. It's where the red line is at the moment. So um, this shows us all the variables, um, the local variables of that particular instance. Okay, and we can see everything about it from its x and y position. Um, we see its y position there is a massive uh, decimal point on it. I never like doing non-integer movements, so that would, that would bother me. Um, and we can see everything that's going on with it, all its different alarms and where, how those are currently set, all its physics settings, all the built-in variables, but also all the variables that you've actually assigned to yourself, so like firing, delay, recoil, and control angle, all that kind of thing. Okay, and you can also see all instances in your game um, that are currently exist, okay, so whatever room you're currently in, all the instances that exist, all your persistent instances and so on, and just go through and find each specific one, but there obviously might be loads in here depending on how your game works, like I've got one for every wall in here, and this this might hopefully show you why doing wall objects, uh, what your walls is just individual objects isn't a great idea, because look at all of these instances! Um, but um, it's still a cool system if you don't know how to do tiles and things yet. It's just like, why well, it's not the best idea in the absolute long run. Um, but the other cool thing you can do in here is you can actually change variables. So not only can you look and see like, okay, yeah, my horizontal speed, vertical speed is what I expect them to be. I'm stood still, so those are both zero. My gravity is this and so on. I can actually change these variables. So when gravity is 0 0.3 at the moment, so like running, running the game at the moment, you see jumping stuff, I can jump about this high. But say I wanted to just test to see what it would be like to jump higher without having to stop and recompile the whole game. Well, I can just jump into here and be like, let's set gravity to 0 0.05. I just double clicked on that, by the way, in order to do that. And then hit continue, and then I can jump, and suddenly I can jump really high, because my gravity is way lower. So I can just change that, or say like I'm just testing the game and I want to set myself to infinite lives and so on, I could change my HP variable to just be 100 while I'm doing it, and, and, and all that kind of thing, and restore anything I've lost, and and all that kind of stuff. Obviously that only just change, that doesn't change the variable in the code, it just changes it in memory while you're running out. So like if I run into the next room or whatever, it recreates my player and my variable jump gets set, my gravity gets set back to what it should be in the create event, right? Because we're not changing the code, and then before I close this, obviously variables will go back to normal, because, uh, because yeah, because as I say, I'm just changing them as they are currently in memory. The other thing I can do with this window is actually select an instance in real time as well. So if I pause here, because I, I might have a ton of instances going on here, if I actually just click on an object, so I click on this dead guy over here um, while the game is paused, because I broke it there, you see selected instances changed to O dead. Now we've got HSP and a VSP and gravity and so on and so forth. Yeah, select another one of these that's set. Done to equal zero. Let's set gravity to equal uh, minus six and uh, our gravity to just equal zero and uh, VSP to equal minus four. And then if I run that, you can see him just float off into the sky. Also moving sideways a bit because this HSP was a thing. But that can show you as a cool way of just being able to set and manipulate things like in your game in real time, just using debug mode, um, just to be able to check what's going on or even just try new things and test things out without actually affecting your code and having to rerun or recompile the game, which can be very useful as your project gets bigger and things take longer and longer to compile. Another really useful thing is it doesn't just have to be variables and stuff you're looking at. So this is a different game. This is a project I'm working on at the moment called Tribal Tension, and um, it, it does some fancy surface magic to do these cool little waves that I've kind of got um, along the coastline, okay? Um, so say I wanted to make sure that that surface had the right data in it and everything like that, I could take a look at that. So if I pause the game, 
We've got this surfaces and textures window in the in the graphics area, okay? And there's a bunch of other cool information in here that shows various uh, GPU settings and so on and so forth. Even your draw set color and your draw set alpha, what those are currently are. Um, that's a really useful thing to be able to test. And uh, this surfaces and textures area is really useful. Um, you might have to select surface um, as opposed to texture. Um, and you might have to click this button here that says load texture just to load them actually in for that frame. But I can actually click on this and get a full thumbnail preview of what the surface contains. So this is my application surface that shows like the whole game kind of as it stands, right? And um, I forget what's on this invisible surface. That's Oh yeah, that's the surface with the roads being drawn. It might be hard to see on the video, but you can see the little roads being drawn between places. And that can also, there's a surface I used to store blood splatter and that kind of thing. So I can see what's currently in there. And then this surface at the bottom is what contains the surface I used to draw the wave. So I draw this blue, big blue blob of the land and I do it with a kind of sine wave. So I can see and make sure that that's got the information in it that I expected it to have. I can see a very clear visual representation. I can also see other stuff like if I go to others, I can also see buffers because I'm using buffers to store my surface data so that... um. I can, uh, so that if uh, I minimize the game, which usually destroys surface data and stuff like that, I've got it stored in a buffer so I can bring it back after uh, I restore the game, okay? And I can make sure that that data is what I expect it to be, which is kind of hard to read because it's all pixels and buffer and so on and so forth. But um, it was very useful for solving a bug when I first started, which um, the buffer wasn't getting the info right, and it was just full of zeros, and I knew that that wasn't right. So um, I played around with it for a bit until I saw that the buffer was working as I expected it to, okay? So all kinds of stuff you can monitor and see and uh, and check with debug mode, it's really, really cool. The other thing I wanna show you as well, um, other than just checking current data, um, you can do something called profiling, which is super awesome. So I'm gonna take this button here and profile, it's in the others uh, section of the debugger. Start profiling, you see profiling is on, and I can stop it if I want to. Now if I just run the game, you can see this starts to get filled with data. And what this does is it actually times the various different step events and sees like how, how many times they are called per step and um, how long they take to complete in uh, in milliseconds, which is super useful for finding what is causing a performance bottleneck in your game and what might be causing things to slow down. So if I order by time here, you can see that the longest uh, events that I've got going on by far are the villager step event and the villager draw event, which makes sense um, as there's a lot of them on screen and they run fairly complicated UI. And at the moment I do a very fairly inefficient uh, thing for actually making them draw themselves in the different colors uh, as they are do. I do that dynamically. I've got an idea for making that way faster in the future. It's going to be really cool. But uh, for now, it actually takes a really long time. And as I get more and more of these villages, um, it goes up and up and up. So if I select this game, I actually have a turbo mode in here that can actually speed this up. You can see more and more villagers starting to emerge. You can see this just increasing and increasing. And I can see that really, really clearly. And I can see exactly um, which objects it is that are causing the biggest slowdown and where I can make the biggest performance gains. If I open these up, I can even see specifically which functions are taking the most time. So I spend a lot of time on the the, uh, the approach function. Not not enough to account for just everything overall, but like on average, that takes more time than most of the other function calls um, in the step event. And in the draw event, I can see like pal swaps that and I'm, I'm doing shader stuff is like, I do shader stuff per villager and that's the bad thing I'm doing at the moment. I have a better way of doing that later, but that's taking up a lot of time here. And um, I think it's something like, I could be wrong about this, but I think it's about 16 ms for one frame at 60 frames a second. That's about how long a frame is at 60 frames a second, 16 ms. So you can take these as a fraction of that and then work out roughly like um, what kind of impact that's having on your performance. Obviously that's all very specific to your machine and like, you know, how that affects performance for you specifically. You have to test this on lots of machines to see what kind of, you know, their, um, what kind of speeds they're getting, but you can definitely see which ones are where you can make the biggest saves in performance, and that's really, really useful. And you can stop this at any time to stop profiling and then just sort of go through and analyze the data however you'd like to. Really, really useful. So that, in a nutshell, is debug mode. Thank you, as always, to my awesome Patreon supporters for helping to make this work actually possible. Big shout outs in particular to Dan in a mule, Alex Ray, Giles Montgomery, Angel Rodriguez, Harold Guidry, Nathaniel Walsh, Lewis R. Pereira, Stephen Hagen, Jason McMillan, Owen Morgan, Bowser the Dog, and John Grimshaw. Thank you very much for your continued support. If you like what I do or you find it helpful and you want to see it continue, the best way to do that is to pledge support to me on Patreon.com like all of these cool kids. Doing so means I rely less and less on freelance work and YouTube ads, which frankly don't make me enough money anyway, and uh, allow me to just keep making great content 
that's great forever, because otherwise I won't be able to make it forever, and that would suck. But for now, I'm creating it. These guys are helping me create it. If you want to help me create it, that would be cool. But if you don't want to or you can't, that's fine too. I'm just glad to have you on board. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.